In this video I'm going to show you how to mount your embroideries professionally so that they look like this. So there are lots of different ways you can finish your embroideries and if you'd like to see some of those you can check that out in our video up here. But in this video I want to show you specifically how to do it to have it professionally finished and professionally framed. So you can either do that yourself or you can take your finished piece to a framers and they can do it for you. But I want to show you how to prepare the embroidery and how to finish it in order that you can have it ready to put in the frame. So it's quite a complex process and it will take longer than all, well not all, but most other methods. Um, but once you've done it, it will look fantastic and it will stand the test of time. You won't need to do it again. It's so one that's well worth learning. So we're going to need lots of things to do this. So let's have a look at what materials and equipment we're going to be using. So I've laid out all the materials that we're going to need. So let's just have a little run through and see what we've got. So first and foremost is the embroidery that you want to mount, obviously. I've already chosen a frame for it to fit into. You don't have to do that at this stage. If you wanted to take it to a frame as they would make the frame fit the embroidery. You're going to need some mount board. So this is sort of framing board. This is about two millimetres thick and you're going to need two pieces of those. So at least the size of your frame or your embroidery. We're going to need a pencil. I recommend a mechanical or propelling pencil because they've got nice sharp points and you get a nice fine line on that. Some uh, a knife to cut the board with. Um, a sharp knife. This is a Stanley knife or a craft knife will work well. It needs a new blade in it, a really nice sharp blade is essential. Need a metal ruler to cut against. If you cut against a plastic one you will cut the ruler. So a metal ruler and a cutting mat as well to cut your board onto. A set square to make sure that your board is square is a good idea. We need some cotton or calico to cover our board with. Some sharp fabric scissors to cut the cotton with. We're going to need some glue, which we're going to fix the cotton to the board with. This is um, a PVA glue. If you're in the UK, you will know what that is. Otherwise, a white all-purpose craft glue that's water-based will work just as well. We're going to need some pins to fix our embroidery onto the board. Glass-headed pins are the best, the ones with the little round head on them, because you're going to need to push them into the board and it can hurt your fingers. got a piece of felt just to cover the back of the embroidery just to give it a little bit of padding. We've got some buttonhole thread or top stitching thread so a nice thick thread so we can sew the embroidery to the board with. A curved needle is kind of essential for this. We're going to fix this to a hard board so you can't sew as you would normally sew a nice big curved needle. This here is a bit more unusual, so some packaging bubble wrap or something soft sort of packaging um, that you can roll up to make a frame because we're going to need to turn the embroidery upside down so it doesn't damage the embroidery. So this is just to cushion the embroidery while we work on the back. You need some more fabric for your backing. You can use the same cotton or calico as you did before or you can put something decorative on the back if you like. I've got a couple of L-shaped pieces of card here. And this is good to work out what size our frame is going to be. So you can either cut those from paper or this is one that's come out of a frame that I haven't used that I've just cut in half. And then the last thing that you'll need is some heavy books to put on top of your board to allow the glue to dry. OK, so we've looked at the materials, so let's get going with our mounting. So just before we get going on the actual piece I'm going to mount, I just want to show you very briefly the process so that you understand what it is I'm talking about. So I've just got a little sample here. This is my class sample that I use. So this is the embroidery. Um, we're going to fasten the embroidery around two pieces of card that have been stuck together so that it's nice and stiff. So to do that, we are going to cover the board in some cotton or some calico. Um, we're going to sew the embroidery to that cotton calico so it's nice and tight. We're going to make the corners nice and neat and that's what will keep our embroidery nice and tight. And then we're just going to put a backing over that just to protect the back and stop um, anything nasty getting in there. Should it do that? Um, so we're going to put a backing on that and we're going to sew around the backing with a buttonhole so it's really nice and tight to the edge. So it gets us this nice finished 
mounted piece of board ready to go in your frame. So this is the embroidery that I'm going to mount in this video. Now this did start as a little sampler and ended up being quite a nice finished piece, um, but hence the fabric is quite small. If I'd known I was going to be finishing it, I would have allowed more fabric, um, but that's not a problem. I'll show you how we can get around that. Um, I have got a nice big piece of backing fabric, so that will definitely help me. So this is the piece that I'm going to mount. Now it has been taken off the frame already. Um, you might find it easier to measure your piece for the board that goes underneath while well, it's on the frame but you can do both ways it doesn't really matter mine is off the frame so I'm going to do it like this and I have already bought myself a frame to fit it now this is just off the shelf I think this one came from Ikea who got an Ikea handy now these box frames are useful for embroideries they've got a depth to them I could put my hand in that there and that means that the glass um, will stay off the embroidery so it's a good idea that the glass doesn't touch the embroidery this does have glass I've just taken it out so I don't blind you on the camera with it but it does have a piece of glass that sits near the top of the frame and the embroidery will sit on the bottom of the frame so I've pre-bought my frame you don't have to if you don't want to you can mount your piece any size you like take it to professional framers and they will make a frame to fit your piece so that's two ways of doing it um, you can either buy it off the shelf or you can get somebody to make it to fit. Now this frame did come with a mount card inside it already pre-cut which happens to fit my embroidery quite nicely which is why I chose this frame so it's um, I'm just going to put this in the middle because it's it's quite round um, but what this does do is I can just see a little bit of my stitching from the silk where I've stitched the silk to the calico. Um, now I can move the frame up, but it doesn't put my peacock in the middle and I'd quite like him in the middle. So what I've done is cut myself another frame. This is just out of a piece of cardboard, a gold piece of cardboard. And I've cut it just a little bit smaller than that white one. So it's giving me a little gold edge and that gold edge will then cover that stitching and I can have him slap bang in the middle of the frame like so and the gold on the edge picks up the gold in the peacock as well so that's quite a nice contrast but this is just to show you that even if you have made a sample and it's not big enough that you can do something to fix it basically you can make your frame a little bit smaller and you can still mount it properly so I'm going to use these two pieces and I'm going to use it in this white frame so let's look at the next step just before we move on to the next step, I'd just like to show you this quickly, um, a way of measuring a different size frame, because the peacock's going in the centre of the frame, but you may not want to put something in the centre. So this is my leaf design from my silk shading book, the RSN Essential Stitch Guide to Silk Shading, which has never been mounted, but it is off the frame. Um, but this is where these come into play. So this is just a... Um, a card mount from a frame that I haven't used and I'll just cut it in two to make myself two L shapes. You can just do that out of a piece of white copier paper, that works absolutely fine. Um, and then you can use these L shapes to show you where your frame is going to go and you can have a little bit of a play with it if you like. So you can put the leaves in the middle if you wanted to, you can put your design in the middle. I kind of stitched it so that the branch was coming out from something else. So the idea was that the branch came out from the edge of the frame like so and then you can move this around to help you decide what size frame you want don't be afraid of a little bit of space around the design these leaves are about to fall they're all curled up and they've gone dry and they're about to drop off the branch so it's quite nice to leave that space underneath to allow the leaves to fall off so you could come down and leave a little bit of space so it doesn't have to be symmetrical and it doesn't have to be right in the middle of the frame and these are great just for trying out some different ideas you could come do a long thin one that's quite interesting so use these frames to um, just help you play before you make any decisions once you have made your decision it's a good idea at this stage and this is probably more relevant to if you're going to get somebody to make you a frame afterwards rather than having a bought one off the shelf. This is the point to measure the size of the board that you would need underneath. So I would leave this frame on here. I would get a couple of pins and I would just mark where the edge of that frame comes. So just putting the pin in right on the edge of that frame Once 
all four sides. You can also mark the corners if you want to. So that means you can now remove your frame and then you've got your areas marked out. So you could then measure between your pins, it happens to be exactly 14 centimetres, which is luck more than judgment. Um, so 14 centimetres that way, I could measure it the other way as well. And that's just over 19. Be very accurate with your measurement. So then I know that my board is a minimum of 14 centimetres by 19 centimetres. And you might want to allow some extra for an actual frame to go around it on top. So don't just make the board that size. If you wanted to put a mount board on top, you'd need to allow the thickness of the mount board as well. But this is a good starting point once you put your frame around and had a visual check on how you want it to look. It's a good starting point to measure. So I know I need those measurements plus the measurement for my frame. So if you wanted to frame your embroidery to um, the size you want and then get somebody to make your frame, this would be the way to do it. OK, so now we need to cut the size of the board that we want to wrap the embroidery around. Now, I have a frame already cut here to fit into my um, wooden frame. So ideally, I would like to cut my board for my embroidery the same size as the frame and everything can just sandwich together in the frame and it will all nice snug fit. Um, the problem I have is I don't have enough fabric to do that. You need at least an inch to be able to wrap around the back of the board and I don't have that so I'm going to need to cut my board for the embroidery between this inner cut here and the outer one so it's going to have to come around the middle about this sort of size so what I'm going to do is get to put that in the middle like so and I'm going to put my pins in so I'm just going to make sure that's equal on both sides. Mark the centre with my pins as we did before. Now this is square so I only really need to take one measurement. So we've got 12 centimetres exactly and I want at least another so I need two and a half centimetres, it's about an inch. So I need at least that much to wrap around the board. So if I made 12 plus two, so if I made it to about there, so that's 12, 13, 14, don't forget the other side, 15, 16. So I need 16 centimetres. So it's a good idea to write these measurements down. So it's going to be 16 square, so 16 centimetres, 16 centimetres that way. My board will fit just inside the frame, so the frame can sit on top of the embroidery, but I've got enough fabric to wrap around it. So take your time to measure the board correctly. Um, if I had known I was going to mount it, I would have allowed myself some extra fabric, but it doesn't matter. You, can, you don't need it to come to the edge of the board, just as long as there's something for this mount board to sit on. So I've got my measurement 16 by 16, and now I'm going to cut the board out. So I've got my measurement 16 by 16 centimetres. I'm a centimetres girl, but you can do it in inches if you want to. So I'm just going to mark in 16 centimetres from the end. I'm using the propelling mechanical pencil because it's very accurate. So 16 by 16. We'll check it's square in a moment. So I've got two points there. Just going to join those up. Square, so I'm going to go 16 this way as well. Join that one up. Let's just check that corner. 
is square, which it is. Yep, happy that that's all square. So now I can cut that out. I'm going to use my metal ruler. It's got a thick side there for cutting against so you don't cut yourself if the knife should slip. So right on that line. I've got a brand new blade in here. That's quite important. This is hard to cut. This is two millimetres thick. So a nice sharp blade is essential. And I'm going to put my ruler right on my line. Now the little trick here is to let the blade do the cutting for you. So don't force it, let the blade do the work. So I'm just going to put the blade against the ruler and I'm going to do lots of very fine cuts. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on, enough to hold the knife on, but not um, so much that I'm wobbling all over the place. It, the knife will do the cutting for me. So that's gone through. So that was five or six cuts maybe. Um, and I'm not hurting my wrist when I'm doing it because I'm letting the blade do the work. And that's gone through there. You can feel that through. So I'm going to cut the other way. You'll notice I'm putting the ruler on the piece that I want to keep and I'm cutting off. So if I do slide off, I'm not cutting the piece that I actually want. I'm cutting the excess ball. So put the ruler on the part that you want to keep. So again, lots of nice cuts and let the blade do the work for you. There we go. Okay, so we've got one piece of card. Now what we're going to do is we're going to need a second piece of card. Um, that's a little bit flimsy. So we want another piece, we're going to glue the two together and that will make a nice sturdy ground to wrap our board around. So I'll cut that second one now. So I've cut my second piece of board out, just double check that they are the same size and they need to be exactly the same size. If they're not, I suggest cutting yourself another one. Um, accuracy is everything here. So two boards and so I'm going to stick them together. I've got some of my white um, water-based glue and a couple of pieces of stiff card just to use to spread the glue around. So you need quite a bit on here and you need to go right to the edges with it. That's quite important that you get up to the edge. I don't want so much that it all squeezes out everywhere but quite quickly because it dries fairly fast. go, enough on that. My second piece on top, make sure it's lined up. It's quite good this glue, there's enough to be able to just move it around and make sure that this is nice and accurate before you stick it down. So okay so to let that dry I'm just going to put a bit of paper on top of it just in case any glue does come out. And then some nice heavy books just to squash it down. English medieval embroidery is always a good one. And Weldon's embroidery encyclopedia on top. I'm just going to leave that there and let that dry so the board's unstuck nice and firmly together. Okay, so I've got my two pieces of board nice and firmly stuck together now. So now we're going to cover this in a piece of cotton or calico, whichever, it doesn't matter which. And the reason we're doing this is a couple of reasons. We're going to protect um, the board. So there's another layer between the board and the embroidery. Um, and we are also going to need something to sew the embroidery to. So if we don't cover this in... Um, fabric we've got nothing to sew it to. So all I'm going to do, make sure you iron this first and I'm going to put the board about there. So we need a sort of length of a thumb to go over the board. So it's about three centimetres so maybe an inch and a little bit. 
there all the way around to fasten this to the board so about that much don't need to be too accurate I'm just gonna eyeball that Do each stage as accurately as you can, and that will make the next stage a little bit easier. Right, so we're going to cover this. So we're going to glue this fabric to the board now. Now, the really, really important thing here is that you don't put glue right next to the board. We're going to have to sew through this fabric, and if we've glued it to the board, we won't get the needle through it. So the glue has got to come inside along here and not along the board here because we're going to run into trouble later. Okay, so let's glue two sides first and then I'll show you what to do with the corners. So I'm going to run my glue just along there. Don't go around the board here, so stopping it right there. It just needs a small amount like that and then we can just turn that over, press that down. Just hold it until it's caught, just till it's stuck. Like so, and then you can turn the board around going to do the same on the other side. So again, don't go to the edge of the board. We'll end up in all sorts of trouble later. Now we want this to be quite tight, so I'm going to put my fingers on the fabric and push against the board. So this is nice and tight. Then pull this over here and you can see how tightly I'm pulling on that. Really tightly. So there's no bubbles in it underneath that will show through later on. Again just hold that just until it's stuck and it's not going to move. Okay now what we need to do is to deal with the corners. Now if I just fold them over we have the bulk of all this fabric in the corner so we've got that piece of that piece and another piece in the middle there and that gets quite bulky and by the time we wrap the embroidery around it we've got lumpy corners so we need to get rid of some of this fabric. So there's several ways of doing it but this is the way I do it. So I'm going to cut from the middle of the board out to the corner like so. So I've just cut up there to the corner. I'm going to fold that open and then I'm going to cut the corner off. So I'm cutting off a triangle like so. So let's do the other corners. Don't go in from the corner of the fabric, you come in from the middle of the board out to the corner of the board. Open that up and then cut off the corner. Do that all the way around, middle of the board to the corner. Open that up. You can do this stage before you stick it down if you like, but I just find it a little bit easier to stick two sides first. Now we can fold these sides in and we can stick these down and we've got a nice flat corners. Now you can go over the cotton that you've already stuck down but again remember not close to the edge of the board. So I'm going to stop short of the edge. there make sure it's stuck down. Now you will get a little bit of glue you can see it's come out from the edge on your fingers so just make sure you haven't got your embroidery 
anywhere nearby while you're doing this and you can just wash it off before you do the next stage. So stick that down, turn it round Push your fingers against the board, fingers on the fabric, pull that nice and tight around there. Just hold it while it sticks. And again, just allow that to dry. You can put some weights on it and leave it to dry and then we'll come back. I'm just going to get the glue off my fingers and we'll come back and have a look at the next stage. So my board is all dry on the back and nice stuck nice and firmly, nice and smooth across there, nice and tight. Now this is a good opportunity just to check if everything fits um, before you go any further. So I've got my embroidery here. So these are the pins that I put in originally from my white mount board and then I decided it needed to be two centimeters bigger either side so I've just measured that out and put some more pins in so those four outer pins should be the same size as my board so we'll just check that before we go any further so those two are fine and those two are fine so I'm happy with that we'll just wrap it around so we know the fabric fits around the board just put these together and we are good to go. So yeah, just double check that sits on top of the board, which it does so everything fits so we can do the next part. Now one stage that I like to do before I pin the embroidery is to put a layer of felt on top of the board. Now the um, back of the embroidery will actually go on this side of the calico. It doesn't go on this side. This is the back of everything. It goes on this side. That's quite important. Um, and what can happen, depending on the technique that you use, is it can be quite thick on the back, especially gold work. So where I finished my threads and brought them through, it can get a little bit lumpy. And if you've just got something on the back of the board, that will cushion the back of your embroidery and it won't sort of leave lumps on the front. So I think it's worth doing this stage, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So I'm just going to use a piece of woolen felt. I'm just going to cut it the same size as my board. So just draw around that. Let's see if that shows up. So, so the felt goes on top of the board with the calico underneath it a bit counterintuitive that and then my embroidery is going to sit on top of that now because I've got my outer pins marked now I'm going to actually take these middle ones out I don't need to mark those I just need the outer ones and I'm going to start pinning my fabric to the board so I'm going to start pinning it by just pinning the centers in and then I'm going to work my way around the rest of the board so I've got those pins in roughly in the right place and what I'm going to do is just turn them inwards like so and you might find this is a bit tight so we're going to pin it to the board and then tighten it around the board later so I'm going to get that roughly in the right place and then all I'm going to do is pull one of the pins out I'm going to actually push it into the side of the board. So it's actually going into the board, which is why you need the glass headed pins because you're pushing with your finger. So I'm going to do that side first. Then I want to do this side. I'm not going to pull it too tightly at this 
moment I just want to get it onto the board so into the piece of board and because we've got two pieces of board stuck together the pins kind of going in between the middle of them so that's why it's good to have two layers and then I'm going to do the other sides so it's actually on the board now so I'm going to put some more pins in and if you can, you need to follow the grain of the fabric and that will make sure that it's on nice and square as long as you stitched it on the grain, of course. So I'm just going to fold that over and push the pin in. So about that distance apart, half an inch. I'm trying to follow this grain of the fabric all the way along. Don't worry about the tension at the minute. Just get the pins in and you'll notice I'm working from the middle out to the corner and then I'll go to the other side and work from the middle to the corner and then the other two sides. Now you want to go right up to this corner, get a pin right in there. The corner can be the parts where it's difficult to get the tension right. So back to the middle now and to the other corner. It's easy if you just lift it off the table, you can wrap the fabric around the board pin goes into the board. Nice equal distances apart, try and put the pins in on the same line of fabric. So I've got one side in, I'm going to go to the other side, middle, out to the sides and then I'm going to repeat with the final two sides and then it's all pinned onto the board and then we need to start tightening it. So I've got all the pins in now, so the fabric is on the board but you can see it's loose. So what we need to do now is to tighten it. So just a little bit at a time, working all, all the way around the piece, just tightening it one pin at a time literally um, and we'll get this fabric tighter and tighter. Now I've just raised it up a little bit, it's a good idea to do this off the edge of the table but we can't film it at the same time and do that so I've just raised it up on the table so that you can see the process. So I'm just going to go back to the centre again and I'm going to take the middle pin, take it out. I'm just going to pull that fabric a bit tighter now and put the pin back in and again work along. So I'm trying to follow the same grain of the fabric as that first pin and that will just keep it nice and square on the board and I'm just pulling it gently all the way round. If I pull too much one side the whole thing will distort so it's just a case of small steps now and just get it tight gradually. So I've gone to the corner, so I'm going to go back to the middle back to the other corner and just follow that line of the weave of the fabric and that should stay nice and square and you can see this starting to pull tightly already these wrinkles are pulling out and they will come out you can get this quite tight around the board so don't worry this stage if you think oh that's all baggy and wrinkly <laughs> it will be fine right up to the corner turn it around and do the opposite side so always go opposite you can just pressure on the back of the board there and just pull on that a little bit more, bend it round the board, pin goes back in between those two boards, take the next one out and do the same. And it's just a little bit each time, you can see that starting to come out and then when I pull the other two sides the wrinkles will come out the other way and it will start to look really good around the board. So I'm just going to keep doing that, working my way round the board, back to the centre, back to each corner, opposite side and you literally um, continue with that process until you're happy it's tight. So I'm going to do that now and then I'll come back when I think it's tight enough and show you what it looks like. Okay so I've been all the way round, it's nice and tight now. Um, if you have a couple of problem areas where it's a little bit more um, wrinkled than other areas you can put extra pins in and that will help just to pull it out a little bit so across the bottom here where I've got this little triangle I've put in some extra ones here so just pulling that really tight and just add an extra pin in the gap and that will add more tension to the board um, 
It is worth mentioning at this point that this part of the process is affected greatly by the very beginning of the process and how you stitched your embroidery and how tightly you stitched it on a frame. So if you had it a little bit loose, it's probably got some weird tension going on and now you're relying at this stage to get that out. So if you concentrate hard on your framing up, um, if you're using a slate frame or really tighten a ring frame or on some stretcher bar frames, uh, we do have a video on how to frame up a slate frame where you can see that up here, a link to that up here, because doing that stage right will make this stage a lot easier. So it's just worth mentioning that. OK, so it's all on the board. So now what we need to do is to stitch it to the board. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to show you how to fold this in and we're going to stitch this cotton to this piece of calico cotton here um, and then we'll be able to take the pins out and it will be nice and tight. So we're going to clear the decks a little bit um, and we'll have a look at how to do that. So now it's all pinned to the board, it's worth just cutting off this excess fabric here so you're not fighting with it. So I'm going to cut about the same off so it's square all the way around. So just tidy it up. Okay, so now I'm not fighting with that. Now the next thing that you're going to need is a little bit of packaging. Like so. so I've just used some sort of foam packaging, uh, bubble wrap works just as well for this and I've just made some rolls out of it, just rolled it up, you see that there, rolled it up um, and just stuck them together with some sellotape. Now it's not a thing of beauty but it's going to have a really important function so you need to make it the size um, that it just fits inside your board because you want to turn this over now and I don't want to put this embroidery flat on a hard surface because it's going to ruin it so we just need something nice to pad it on so I've just made it the same size as my board so when I turn it over the board is resting so I can work on the back but my embroidery is not touching the surface of the table so it doesn't have to be a beautiful thing but just think something that you can roll you could even put it upside down on some tissue paper and a towel if you wanted to it depends a bit on the kind of embroidery that you've got on the back but I've got gold work which will squash so I'm just using this as a cushion to um, protect it right so we're going to fold the corners in now now we cut the corners off when we did this backing here but we're going to see the very corner of this so we want to just fold these ones in carefully so what we're going to do is mitre it like you would for a Christmas present if you're wrapping a Christmas present or a birthday present so I'm going to fold the corner in so this is 90 degrees if it's over here like this at an angle it won't work so it needs to be 90 degrees and don't pull too tight that way so it does this weird stretching thing so just nice and relaxed in the corner and then you want to fold the fabric along here and fold that in like so and do the same this side and what you ideally want is this corner here you don't want them to meet because we're going to pull them together when we stitch but you don't want them so far apart that they're not going to pull so if I just push those together I find that they meet so that's okay that tension is good and I'm just going to put a pin in just stick it into the board and that will just hold that corner in place till we're ready to stitch it like so now I find it's worth folding all the corners first because otherwise you're battling with it when you get to it so just do that with the other corners now so 90 degree just make sure that crease is right down the board or you won't get this fold in the corner now that one is too close you can see it all folding up on itself so the way to get over that is to open this up again and pull this into the middle a bit more just takes up some of that tension on the cotton fabric fold it again and you should find that it meets nicely here and if I just push that together that will meet so you might have to fiddle a little bit with the corners to get it right. And what usually happens is three corners come out really nicely and you fight with the last one for some reason. So just take the time to fold them first and then all you've got to do is stitch the backing on. You're not fighting with the corners at the same time. So I'll just fold these two. 
Okay, so I've pinned them all in place and now we're going to sew this fabric to the board. Now it's really important that you sew this as tightly as you can because when you take the pins out, you don't want the fabric to relax. At the moment the pins are taking the tension, but the sewing needs to do that. So I'm going to start in the middle here and I'm going to work up to a corner and then I'm going to show you what to do with the corner. Now the best thread for this is a buttonhole or a sew, um, sew or um top stitching thread, a nice thick thread because this needs to be really strong. You're not going to see this stitching, it hasn't got to be beautiful but it has got to be strong. So I'm just going to pull some of that off. And the needle that you will need for this is a curved needle. It's very hard to do this with a straight needle, you make life much easier if you've got a curved one. This is a size 8, it's a nice chunky one so we can get through these layers of fabric. Now they do take a little bit of practice to use this. We do have a video on how to use a curved needle so do check that out. We'll put a link at the end to that because they are a little bit different from normal needles. And I'm going to start my thread in the middle. So I'm resting my hand on the board and I'm going to grip this bit of fabric. So we're going to sew this fabric so this calico under here and that's why it's important that we didn't put any glue along there because now we'd have to stitch through the glue which is really going to hurt your fingers so we didn't do that so we're okay so I'm going to hand on the board pull the calico really tightly and then I'm just going to use the point of the needle to help me get it in the fabric now it has to go through the top layer and that layer as well you can feel if it hasn't it will just lift up as soon as the needle's in, let go with this hand because it will start to hurt your fingers if you're gripping it really tight and not letting go. So just hold tight while you get the needle in, then let go with your fingers. And I'm just going to pull the needle out. Put a knot in the end of my thread. So I'm just going to start the thread off with a couple of stitches. Pull that fabric tight, get the needle in, let go once the needle's in so you don't hurt your fingers. does get a little bit caught around the pins. I'll show you what we can do about that in a minute. So over a couple of times just to get that started. Like so. See that's nice and tight. So we're going to work a herringbone stitch. Now the important thing to know about this is if you're right-handed you're going to go round anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. If you're left-handed you're going to go clockwise. So I'm going to show you the right-handed way. So pull on the fabric, needle comes ahead, so going the direction you're going comes ahead and you're just going to pick up a little straight stitch like that. Now all the thread should go over that side. Just going to pull that up. Let's get caught around these. And you're going to cross it over and you're going to do another stitch, pull the fabric tight and another stitch ahead. So it comes up ahead of where that last one went and the needle comes out sort of in line with that stitch there. And like I said, it doesn't have to be beautiful. This has got to hold it, so don't worry too much if it's not a perfect herringbone stitch. So pull the fabric tight, needle goes over. Straight stitch like so. And pull it tight. Now I am battling with my pins a little bit so I'm going to show you a little trick to avoid that happening. So I've got myself a piece of tissue paper and just put it underneath everything and just folded it in half in the middle and I'm going to fold it over the pins, tuck it under the end of each one and just flatten that down and now my thread's not going to get caught around my pins because that is quite annoying. So we can carry on now. So pull the fabric tight. Needle comes ahead, it comes out level with that previous stitch. Crossing it over, you can see that herringbone pattern start to form now. You can take the pin out when you get to it. Pull that tightly, needle goes in and out, let go with your hand. And go all the way up to the corner. Now, if you're left-handed, 
you'll want to turn it round that way and you'll want to go in that direction up to the corner. It's very hard to do this stitch with the wrong hand. Um, so if you're left-handed, just turn it round and go the other way around, go clockwise. Go right up to the corner, pull that fabric if you can. One more stitch in there. Okay, so let's look at what we do with the corner. Before I go around the corner, this thread can be a bit stretchy, so I'm going to just tighten it up. So I've got a laying tool here, I've got a Malor, or you can use a great big thick needle. Um, don't use your scissors because that will cut the thread. I'm just going to go under each of these stitches and pull it tight. You can see already how much they're moving. So worth doing this before you get to every corner because that will just make it super tight. Okay, so let's get around the corner. So I'm going to turn this round and I'm going to come across to this side and we're going to lace this up. So the needle is going to go into that crease. Like so. And then across to the other side. back across to this side. Don't worry about pulling it tight at the minute. You can do that in a moment. And get right into that corner. One more little one, I think, will get me down into the corner. So we've laced it across. We've gone across, down, across, down, across, down, across, right to the corner. And then hopefully Move that out right a second. When I pull that, it'll all pull up nicely. Let's hope this works. Perfect. So you can't see the join. So when we put the backing fabric on, it will cover these stitches here. And we'll come around the corner and we'll see this nice, neat corner. So to carry on with the next side, take that pin out. I think. Okay, to again, pull on the fabric. And I'm just going to take that needle into that side there and come up where I want to start my fabric like so. And that will just secure that corner nice and tightly if I pull on that. This thread's quite strong, you can pull it quite quite tightly, so nice neat corner. And then all I do is the same for the other three sides. So just pull that fabric tight again, get your needle back in. At the corner there's more layers of fabric to go through so just make sure you dig your needle in and pick up all those layers and then off we go again so i'm going to go all the way around and then i'll come back and we'll have a look at what that looks like when it's finished so being all the way around uh, last few stitches to go so i'll just show you how i finish off so i'm just coming back to where i started so there's my last stitch and then before I finish it off, I'm just going to pull up those stitches again. Take up the slack and then you can see how much they stretch. And then to finish just a couple of stitches over and over, just make sure the end of that thread's really secure. One more for good luck. Cut that off. Move that out of the way. So all the way around, nice and tight. So now we're going to take the pins out and hope that it doesn't relax. So if we've done it all properly, this should be fine. So just going to pull them all out. No particular order because now hopefully the stitching is holding the fabric and not the pins.
and then we're going to turn it over and just have a little look at it that looks good to me it hasn't relaxed at all so if it had relaxed a little bit in a certain place you could turn it back over and you could pull that fabric again and you could put a few more stitches in and that should pull it tight or you could lace across the back so take a piece of thread and go back and forth work a stitch through um, the backing fabric and across and then just pull that up really tightly and that will usually get 99% of any um, any bubbles left in it um, out so you've got a couple of options there if you have got a few bubbles in it um, what I'm going to do now is we're going to put a backing on it you don't have to put a backing in it you can put it straight in the frame like that it's just nice to finish it off properly um, nothing can get underneath no little moths or bugs or anything else that might get in there we have had some things um, in the past that come in that are old that have had little creatures in them which is not very nice so a little backing on it will just make it nice and secure um, but I just want to cut away some of this fabric because it's quite lumpy and bumpy on the back so again you don't have to do this part if you don't want to but all I'm going to do is just open that up and where that crease is just cut down the crease up to the stitching don't cut through the stitching at this point open that up and then just cut that little triangle off and if you do that all the way around that should take out some of that excess corner fabric so I'll do that with each corner and then you can see if I just press that down that's much flatter than this corner here so I'm just going to go around and do that in all the corners Okay, so corners are all nice and flat now and we're ready to put the backing on. So let's have a look at how we do that. So I normally use the same fabric for my backing as I used to cover my board with, but so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more clearly, I'm going to use a darker fabric so that it shows up. Now I like to use quite a lot of fabric for my backing. Um, I have seen um, other people do it and they just turn the minimum edge in but I quite like a lot so you can choose how much you you actually use. So I'm going to use a piece that big and if I just put it over my embroidery it's still upside down on my little padded frame so that the piece of embroidery is in the middle and then I'm going to fold in the edges. So I'll bind it um, and then I'm just going to fold that in quite straight. Now what you want is, you can see that, just hold it up, is to have a little edge showing of your embroidery. So don't take this right to the edge because it starts to fold around the front and then you can see it from the front. So a couple of millimetres in makes a really nice neat edge. And then just take a pin and just push it, just catch the edge of that. Um, backing and just push the pin into the board and that will just hold that in place while we do the other side so turn it round do the same with this one now it wants to stretch a little bit so if you come to sort of a little bit further in then when you put the pin in you can pull that out and that will be nice and tight across the back so put my pin in turn it over and push it in and that will make that nice and tight so I'm just going to do that with the other two sides now the trick here this has come from years of experience of doing this is to fold it back to the middle just fold those in a little bit so that this one sits inside that outer one so it's doing a little bit of an angle fold that back on itself and then unfold it and you get a nice neat finish and you can't see that one coming underneath this so put your pin into your fabric put the pin in place where you want it on the board turn it over push it in do the same with this fold it back to the middle just make sure they're overlapping a little bit so that sits inside fold it back on itself unfold it you might just have to fiddle with it a little bit make it fit one more pin so just catch the fabric into the board turn it over push it in so it's nice and tight all the way across the middle then you can put the corner ones in 
catch that and put the pin in the corner make sure you're covering all these stitches underneath fold it over push it in the less you fiddle with this part the better I find so get it all folded right pin it and stitch it and then you're not putting creases in it and handling the fabric so that's two corners and it will stretch quite a bit that looks like quite a long way off but by the time I've put that in there and pulled it over it's nice and tight it's really lovely If you find it won't quite reach, that one is a little bit short, really easy to fix that. Just put the pin in underneath, pull a little bit of the fabric out. Right, if you want to put a few more pins in you can, just make sure you can see that piece underneath there so make sure that top one comes over the bottom one I don't tend to put loads of pins in at this point I don't think you need to really just one more in between each of those Okay, so it's on it's nice and tight nice even space around the edge looking good um, get this right so you're not trying to fiddle with it and move it when you're stitching it you know get this exactly right get it nice and tight and then you've got to just stitch around it so to stitch around it I'm going to use my buttonhole thread again now the good thing about this stitch we're just going to do a slip stitch so like we did in the corner and you can actually measure how much thread you need so you haven't got to start and stop it for this so I'm just going to go one two three four that's a little bit for finishing and starting so five lengths is good that's quite a long bit of thread if you were doing a really big piece I wouldn't do it in one piece I'd do it in several but for a small piece it just saves you having to start and stop so not in the end and then just take one of the center pins out hold that back and you can start your thread in the calico underneath like you did for your herringbone stitch a couple of stitches over and over that will secure the end place let's go back that way now you want to come out where the fabric the backing fabric meets that calico so you want to come out on there like that I'm just going to work a ladder stitch so I'm going to take into the backing fabric just take a little stitch like so this is where the curved needle comes into its own just curve it round like that if I do that slowly you'll see that pull down nice and tight so it's a stitch in the backing fabric a stitch in the back of the embroidery a stitch in the backing fabric so we're just going to alternate and you want to try and go in a nice straight line along here don't worry about what this is doing this should go in a straight line the backing fabric will pull out to meet it so just get this one in the board you can see how far away that is from the fabric but that will pull out don't worry about that so the needle goes into there crease just make a little stitch try and do them nice and evenly you won't see these stitches they disappear but it's still nice to have that little bit of accuracy and if I pull it tight you can see there how nice and tight that's pulled down to the board so we're just going to go up to the corner don't worry about where that fabric is just get the needle in a nice straight line in the bottom so let's have a look at getting around the corner so I've come right up to it and if you can work it so that your last stitch comes in the lining fabric and it comes out in the corner like so 
that will get for a neater corner. So I'm going to pull that out towards the corner, turn your frame around, and then if you just put your thumb on that just to hold it, and then your needle goes back in underneath. If you pull that tight, you're getting that nice sharp corner. This will pull out to meet it, so don't worry about that little gap. Make sure you get the top layer and not the one underneath. There we go, pull it nice and tightly. And then we just finish off down this last side now. When you pull that tight, get that nice sharp corner. Last couple of stitches now, and we want to hide the end of this thread, so I'll show you a neat little way of doing that. So once more into the back, and then I'm going to come back towards me in the same way, so I'm going to pick up that fold of that fabric, but just go the opposite way now. And then one more back that way and that will just go back and forth a few times that will just secure the end of the thread like so pull it tight pull that up snip it off so you can't see the end of it and that's the backing on really nice and tightly so let's have a look at the front make sure it's still nice and tight which it is Okay, happy with that. So at this stage we're going to get this in the frame that I've already um, bought for it. If you haven't got a frame this is the point to take it to a professional framers and they'll do it for you and they'll discuss um, different mats that you can put over the top and different frames that will go nicely with it and you'll get a really super professional job on that. Um, do take it to somebody who knows what they're doing with embroidery, it's different from framing um, a painting so if they've got some experience of this sort of thing before that's even better. Okay, let's get it in the frame and see what it looks like. So let's assemble it into the frame and see how it, the finished thing looks. So I have um, taped my gold mat inside my outer mat and I've just done a couple of pieces of masking tape on that just to hold that in place so it doesn't move around. Now I'm just going to place this by eye because this is the important bit, how it's going to look. It doesn't really matter if it's not accurate on the back. So I think about there, I turn that over, hold that in place, and then I'm just going to put some bits of masking tape on, just to secure that on either side. Let's just double check that hasn't moved, which it hasn't. And then I think just for extra security, I'm going to put a longer piece on there. it in the frame right the way up. Now I did cut this piece um, and I'm not sure about it at the minute so I'm going to frame it without that and I can always come back and put that on afterwards if I want. Sometimes you need to see it in the frame and live with it a little bit to see what's going to look like. Okay so we can get rid of this bit. Now save this because it might come in useful again. 
doing that. I'm going to leave the glass out just so it doesn't dazzle on the camera, but obviously I would put the glass back in first. Make sure you give it a good clean because the time you've taken the frame apart a few times, you can get fingerprints on it. So that's going to go upside down there like that. Put the backing board in. So press the little tabs down. piece has been hanging around for so long now it's really nice to get it finished properly actually so you ready well I think that's a vast improvement <laughs> from it hanging around in a box somewhere so that's it all finished professionally mounted hand embroidery so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. This is quite um, a limb depth technique. Um, it is a lot more to it than framing and finishing any other kind of embroidery, but it is worth knowing how to do it. And um, because if you want something really special and you want it to last a lifetime, this is the way to do it. So if you have enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the little bell as well if you want notifications of when we upload something new so you don't miss anything. Um, check out the needle on the video, sorry, on how to use a curve needle um, that's really useful as well um, and we will see you in the next video